So step number four, your most important crucial step that you absolutely have to do is correct your anion gap to albumin because you're missing the answer if you don't do this. My step number five only exists if the patient actually got high anion gap metabolic acidosis. If the patient has a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, your next important step is to calculate something known as delta delta. Now let me be honest with you. I love the philosophy of delta delta, but I hate the mathematics. And therefore I think let's throw the mathematics in the trash for now and let's just do this my way. I think my way actually makes you understand it better and you'll never be confused ever again. So first off, let's point out what is the purpose of actually calculating delta delta. So when you calculate delta delta, you're trying to see if one of these three things exist. And number one is no other pathologies. Number two, do you have a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis? Number three is do you have a metabolic alkalosis? So the way I like to look at delta delta is the following. The change in anion gap should be equal to the change in bicarb. If you had a normal anion gap of 10, you had a bicarb of 24, which is perfect. So for an anion gap of 10, I expect my bicarbonate to be at 24. Now, when your anion gap changes as your anion gap increases, you would expect a concurrent decrement in your bicarb. 